Hello and welcome to the Genshin Impact version 1.4 special program. I'm Zach Aguilar. Many of you already know me as the voice of the male traveler, Ether. I hope. <laughs> and once again, I'm joined by... Hello everyone, I'm Karina Betger and I voice Paimon in Genshin Impact. You know, Zach, I think more and more people are finally getting to know your voice from these special programs we keep doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. And this time, we have another very special guest joining us. Please welcome the amazing Erica Harlicker. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Erica Harlicker. I voice Venti, the windborn bard, who is, spoiler alert, otherwise known as Barbados, the animal archon himself. <laughs> I'm absolutely thrilled to do version 1.4 previews with you two. This is going to be so amazing. So great to have you, Erica. That Venti laugh is already a classic, and your voice is amazing as Venti. Do you mind sharing a bit about how you do that for our players out there? Yeah, well, okay, it's top secret, but since I like you guys, I'll tell you. Okay, you just have to get into, like, the right headspace. So think about apples. Oh, dandelion wine, delicious. Gliding is so much better than walking. I'm the greatest five-star in the whole universe. And then you just speak. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let me try it. <clears throat> <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> that was so good! <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I tried my best. Um, anyways, before we get to the new version previews, I'd like to thank all of our viewers out there for joining us today and for their continued love and support of Genshin Impact. Yeah, thank you, everybody! Thank you, you're all amazing! So, how's your journey been through version 1.3 so far, Erica? It's been so cool, so much fun. My favorite thing so far has been the Lantern Rite Festival. I'm like... Okay, so I'm like low-key obsessed with wish lanterns and it's my bucket list item to like do one of these festivals in real life one day. So doing it in the game is so cool. It's just so pretty. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. Oh my gosh, yes, it's so pretty. Oh, and by the way, how was your fight with the Primo Geo Bishop, Zach? <laughs> uh, yeah, about that. Um, <clears throat> I think it'd be better if we just take a look at the content in version 1.4. Hey, no changing the subject. How many times did you die? Uh, you know, just <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Why don't I kick things off with an overview for our viewers, shall I? <laughs> Go for it, Erica. <laughs> All right. In version 1.4, travelers will get the chance to take part in the Windbloom Festival, a traditional festival of Mondstadt. <gasps> Another festival? Oh my gosh, I love it. And this time it's in Mondstadt. Oh my god, it sounds so much fun. Yeah. It's a festival that gains its spirit from a thousand winds, which... I love. <laughs> Plus, in version 1.4, we'll have a new playable character, several special events, and a new style of gameplay to explore. Also, the game's main storyline will be progressing in version 1.4, so how good is that? And last but not least, we'll be having some optimizations and adjustments to our overall gameplay experience, too. Wow, sounds so exciting. I can't wait to see more of the details, especially for the Windbloom Festival. But before we get into the juicy previews, let's not forget to mention that we will be giving away redeemable codes for our live viewers throughout the stream. And as always, the codes might appear at any time during the show. Right, so stay tuned and be ready, everyone. Okay, no time to lose. Let's get to the official trailer for Genshin Impact version 1.4, Invitation of Windbloom. Let's go! So, Traveler, the Mondstadt Windbloom Festival. Do you like it? Come on, put your skills to the test. Come enjoy the Windbloom Festival. with you? Just like we do if I was on your adventure team? Could I ask you for some guidance on my chivalric training? I'm still feeling quite uncomfortable. I, I feel much better now. Well, it's a little embarrassing to say, but... Uh, 
Look out! Oh. Unofficial business? How's the research going? <laughs> Don't overdo it. Let me take care of the dirty work. I hear you've got a job for me. You can't run! Life out. Wow, Mondstadt is so pretty with the spring vibe. It looks like the whole city is decorated in flowers. And those mini games, oh, they look like they will be a lot of fun to play too. <laughs> right? I'm more interested in the new enemy though. I got goosebumps when he appeared in the trailer like, ah, scary. <laughs> Same. So why don't we start by introducing more about our new playable character and that scary new enemy? All right, it's all you, Zach. Listen, disciple, if you've got a problem you can't handle, then I'm the one for the job. But if you're looking for prayer, you'd better find some other sister. Huh? You're not a disciple? Alrighty, the new four-star playable character for version 1.4 is Rosaria, one of the sisters from Mondstadt's Church of Favonius. Oh, I remember her! She's the mysterious one we encountered in Dragonspine, you know, the one with her guard is so high she can't even see over the top of it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she, she kind of just looks like bored and apathetic. <laughs> I guess it's no surprise that she has a cryovision. Fits her personality, huh? And as for her weapon, she wields a polearm. Ah, cold and sharp. Yeah, sounds about right for her. She might appear to be indifferent and uncaring, but she defends Mondstadt in her own way from the shadows. Let's jump into some of her skills. Sounds good! With her elemental skill, Ravaging Confession, Rosaria swiftly shifts her position to appear behind the enemy, and then pierces and slashes them with her polearm, dealing cryo damage. Oh, okay, so note to self, never play hide and seek with Rosaria. She'll be sneaking up behind you with like her icy gaze. Oh my gosh, I am also like really easily scared, so that's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but one thing to note though, is that she can't use this skill to travel behind larger enemies. Aww. Oh, I was just thinking about how Rosaria would take on enemies like Ruin Guards. But those hilly churls are doomed for sure! Huh? Yeah? <laughs> yeah, they've never really stood a chance. <laughs> Once Rosaria unlocks her talent, Regina Probationum, 
her crit rate increases while attacking enemies from behind using Ravaging Confession. Okay, so is it just me, or is she starting to sound less like a woman of the cloth and more like an assassin of the blade? <laughs> yeah, but an assassin lugging around a polearm, wouldn't that be, like, too conspicuous? <laughs> well, somehow she pulls it off. Her elemental burst, Rites of Termination, is her signature act of prayer. After swinging her weapon to slash the nearby enemies, she summons a frigid ice lance that strikes the ground, dealing cryo damage. The ice lance will then periodically release blasts of cold air, dealing more cryo damage. Oh, well, that's pretty cool. She'll be like, you better say your prayers because I'm saying mine. <laughs> After unlocking her talent, Shadow Samaritan, Rosaria increases nearby party members' crit rate after unleashing her elemental burst. Oh, cool, 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 cool. So she could be both like a damage dealer and a support depending on how we use her. Right. And check this out. She has a special talent called Nightwalk, which increases the movement speed of her party members at night between 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Oh my gosh, so like the whole team can move faster with her in the darkness? <gasps> it sounds like we'll be out doing some nighttime exploration. Um, but wouldn't gliding be faster? <sighs> okay, let me give my venti another go. <clears throat> but wouldn't gliding be faster? It's, it's just improving so much. <laughs> it is, but we all know that floating is way better. <laughs> By the way, all of Rosaria's talents sound very pious, but Rosaria just doesn't quite look the part. She just doesn't have that, like, style or, or vibe or what, na what you know, that. <laughs> I know, right? She, she even misspells Barbados, uh, the name of the Animo Archon. Um, how dare? Uh, how does that make you feel? Ahem. <clears throat> As the wind blows careless and free, so too may the people of Mondstadt do as they please, I guess. Well, that's one way to put it. So where can travelers get Rosaria? Right, she'll be available in an event wish, which brings us to the event wishes for version 1.4. As you can see, we'll be having both the Windborn Bard, Venti, and Child, Tartaglia, returning through their own separate event wishes in version 1.4. <gasps> Oh my gosh, I'm sure many players have picked up the game after Venti's banner was live, like myself. Ooh. So now, we'll all have a second chance at getting him! I can finally have my Venti! I need myself, please! I can't wait. And it's perfect timing. We'll have the Windbloom Festival alongside his banner. I mean, what better way to celebrate a festival in Mondstadt than with the Animal Archon himself? <laughs> Hold my cider. <laughs> in addition to a new character, we will also be seeing some new weapons in version 1.4 as well, such as the 5-star weapon, Elegy for the End, and the Alley series weapons, Wine and Song, Alley Hunter, and the Alley Flash. Ooh, Elegy for the End. What a poetic name. <laughs> and they're also pretty looking too. Yeah, I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for these. Nice. And with new weapons comes a new enemy. After the version update, we'll get to meet our latest foe, an Abyss Herald. Oh, is it that the enemy that the weird loner Danesliff has been chasing after? <laughs> well, I wouldn't call Danesliff a weird loner. I'm sure he's got his reasons to act the way he does. But anyway, let's take a look at the monster. I'm not gonna lie, he looks pretty cool. Oh my gosh, I'm loving his aesthetic. Blue's my favorite color, but he also looks really scary and like I'm gonna die a thousand times, so right? <laughs> I'm torn. He was huge! He was gigantic! Oh my gosh, but he also seems like he's very related to our storyline too, which is cool. Yeah, that's right. So he won't be appearing as a regular boss yet. We're only gonna encounter him in the storyline. Oh, so he's like only a one-time boss? I can't die to him a million times yet? <laughs> Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what becomes of him and the Abyss Order in later updates. Oh, I'm super curious about how the storyline's gonna progress with him in version 1.4. Right? Luckily, we do have some hints to reveal about that. As the story progresses, we will meet Bowkeeper Danesliff again and delve deeper into the secrets behind the Abyss. 
let's check out some screenshots, shall we? Oh my gosh, yes, I love spoilers. I feel like I know 0% about what's going to happen in the next version. <laughs> Kokor, what? You voiced it. If anything, you probably know way more than Zack, who voiced nothing. Yeah, but I forget everything. Uh, <clears throat> well, anyways, let's get to our first screenshot. Whoa, ooh, it's so purple and creepy. Those chains are like, ah, holding it in place. I feel like it's gonna come after us. It, wait, is it upside down? It is indeed. As we follow the Abyss Herald to a weird domain, travelers will discover a statue of the Seven hanging upside down. Whoa. That is very mystical. <laughs> creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And in Storm Terror's Lair, we'll get to reveal secrets behind the first ever Ruin Guard in Tavat. Oh, what's the story behind the Ruin Guards? I can't even start to imagine. I know, I want to find out more, tell me. In version 1.4, it'll be up to travelers to confront the Abyss Herald's scheme to build an ultra-destructive weapon. The story will be quite the ride, with some twists along the way. All of this will be awaiting players in the new update. What? A cliffhanger? Come on, Zach, you can't tell us anything else? Hmm, okay. Let's just say things are gonna make an impact. An impact? This isn't the time for jokes, what do you mean? <laughs> oh, you know, joy, bitterness, relief, and disbelief, and all that good stuff. Ooh, mysterious. Come on, you gotta give us more than that, though. <laughs> I said nothing. Let's leave it for our players to explore. As for now, we'll be giving away our first redeemable code. Yeah! Viewers, are you ready? Whoa, now's the time to summon your friends if you haven't done so already. Code inbound in three, two, one! Hope you all got those Primo Gems! Now it's time to break down our events for version 1.4. As we saw in the trailer, the main event in 1.4 will be all about the Windbloom Festival. Yay, festivals! And who'd be more fitting to introduce the festival than the voice of the animal Archon himself? Take it away, Erica! Ha! Who knows the city of wind and wine better than I? Through the rights of the wind, I, Venti, shall be your loyal guide. Hey, Paimon's the loyal guide! <laughs> okay, fine. I mean, it seems like too much work for Venti anyway. <laughs> so, let's have a look at the event page first. Windbloom is the festival of freedom and romance in Mondstadt. There's a tradition to send flowers to your loved ones during the festival. And people offer windblooms to the Animo Archon Barbados as an important part of the tradition, too. It looks like many people love Barbados. <laughs> what can I say? My popularity knows no bounds. Uh, so what exactly is a windbloom? Is it like a specific kind of flower? Uh, well, that's a question that even the residents of Mondstadt find hard to answer. Um, here's a chart of all the windblooms people have hypothesized so far. Wait, we even have a chart? <laughs> So just to be sure, they count small lamp grass, which is a grass, and wolf hook berries, berries, as flowers too? Eh, why not? In the land of freedom, anything is possible. But which flower is the wind bloom in your mind? Travelers will get to choose one in the event storyline. Great, I'll choose sticky honey roast. <laughs> That's not even a plan. Stop telling me how to live my life, Zach. Uh, hey, I'll accept it as long as you bring some good wine, okay? Oh, will do. The traveler will cover it. He's at Mora. What? Hey, hey. <laughs> See, this moment of joy is what we're all chasing after, right? There will be plenty of that waiting in the event storyline. 
And in the festive anecdotes section of the Windbloom Festival, we're gonna explore more tales aside from the main event storyline. Don't forget to check those out. Noted, but can we get to those mini games, please? I'm super interested in those. <laughs> yeah, sure. We have three types of mini games featured in the Windbloom Festival. The first one is Bullseye Balloons. In this game, travelers will get to put their archery skills to the test as they accumulate points for shooting the right balloons in succession. But be careful, some balloons reward points while others deduct points. The balloons are so cute! Did you see that some of them look like kitties? I want to <laughs> get one of those! I know, right? Our second mini game is Floral Freefall. As its name indicates, travelers will be trying to collect flower balls while free falling through the air. Oh, I love floating around in the sky. <laughs> well, this one's less about floating and more about falling. Uh, the more time you have remaining when you finish a round, the more bonus points you'll receive. So be sure not to float around too long. And of course, if you don't collect enough flower balls on your way down, you won't get a high score either. Once you reach the ground, the game round will be over. It'll be up to you to decide the best strategy. Well, we definitely have both Wind and Bloom for this one, so I think it fits perfectly with the Wind Bloom Festival. Ha ha ha, yeah. Uh, oh, just a friendly reminder to our players, please be careful out there. Um, falling hurts. Unless you're Xiao doing an air attack. <laughs> oh, true. Our third and final minigame, and my personal favorite, will be Ballads of Breeze. Ooh, interesting. It has a lyre as its icon. Yes! And that's because we're gonna play the lyre in Ballads of Breeze. It's like a rhythm game. Travelers will need to press the circles on the screen at proper timings to earn the points. Oh, it looks super challenging. Wait, wait a second. There's archery, gliding, and playing a lyre. <gasps> it's Venti! <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun to me. <laughs> I guess the people can't help but take after their beloved Archon. Anyway, I really love all those peaceful challenges. Is there any chance that we get to play them after the events are over? Unfortunately, no, but travelers will be able to gain two gadgets by participating in the mini games. one of which is called the Windbloom Festival Commemorative Balloon. So we are getting one of those balloons, yay! Uh-huh, <laughs> and the other gadget travelers may receive is called the Windsong Lyre. With this lyre, travelers may freely play original music in the game, and you can even play the lyre together with friends in co-op mode. Yes, sounds amazing, I can't wait. I know, isn't it so cool? <laughs> okay, let's move on to the third section of the Windbloom Festival, Peculiar Wonderland. Peculiar Wonderland? Oh, uh, what am I even supposed to expect here? Enemies? <gasps> More minigames? <laughs> well, in this domain, travelers will encounter three small randomly generated challenges to unlock buffs before facing off against a final boss. The buffs gained depend on the performance in the small challenges. Let's check out how that works in game. Whoa, that's crazy. I mean, they actually have that many challenges to play? Yeah, some look pretty familiar, like the bubbles and the electric cubes. Oh, and picking flowers. That's peaceful. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Run. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh, and then you have to get to like places where it's not going to collapse? Oh, I know this game. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> it falls hard. so quickly, though. I'm gonna die. Oh, God. <gasps> oh, Marky. Oh, oh, you have oh, to no, memorize memory it? Game. You have to oh, memorize no. it. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a memory game. Oh, no. I'm so bad at these. I, I love memory games. Oh, God. I've already forgotten. Oh, no, I would have oh done the wrong one. Oh, no. <laughs> I would have messed up. <laughs> 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 Travelers will gain festive tour tickets and peculiar collab coupons from minigames and Peculiar Wonderland respectively, which they can exchange for rewards from the event shop. The four-star weapon Windbloom Ode will be available for exchange up to refinement level five. Oh, that's such a good deal, so we better use this chance to get this fancy bow fully refined. Yep, <laughs> and uh, that just about does it for the Windbloom Festival events. Wow, I'm so excited for the liar. I can't wait. 
uh, please come to my world and let's all play songs together. We'll start an orchestra. Yay! We'll start let's a whole jam. orchestra. Yes. We'll, oh, we'll make yes. music together. I love it. <laughs> and Venti knows every song, so Erica, you can teach us every single song in existence. I know, yeah. I know. I just, I, he knows every song canonically, so I'll be the leader. There you go. <laughs> so. <laughs> okay, coming up, we have more info on a new type of permanent gameplay that will be implemented in version 1.4. They're called Hangout Events. Ooh, Hangout Events? That's right. Characters in-game will send us invitations to hang out with them. Great. So how do these hangout events work? Travelers will need to use story keys to unlock a hangout event. In a hangout event, travelers will spend some time with the character that invites them out, and will have a chance to get to know that particular character even better. So they're sort of like story quests? Actually, they're pretty different. In Hangout events, travelers will be facing different choices throughout the dialogues, and these choices will have an impact on how the story goes and which endings we get. Whoa, that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> oh yeah, and certain scenarios can even cause those Hangout events to finish without an actual ending. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Oh, so what if I choose the wrong option and get an ending that I don't want, or no ending at all? Will that be final, or can I get another chance? Yep, we'll have chances to retry. All you need to do is enter the Hangout event again and choose different options throughout the story dialogues. In fact, travelers will be able to play through these as many times as they like. The more endings we unlock, the more rewards we get! Oh, okay, that's a relief. I'd hate if I messed up one of the characters' stories with my bad choices. Oh, I make so many bad choices. <laughs> right, and bad. <laughs> oh, oh, I forgot to mention that each time we unlock an actual ending, we'll receive a hangout memory illustration of our traveler and the character in the hangout event. Oh, so pretty! Oh, these will definitely be worth collecting. <laughs> yeah, Genshin Impact Dating Sim confirmed. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm all ready to hang out with them. So, who will be able to invite us to hang out? Well, in version 1.4, there will be a total of four characters to hang out with, including Barbara, Noelle, Bennett, and Chung Yoon. Oh, nice. This is too much for one heart. But as the traveler, I hang out with everybody, so I've got this. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that everybody would love to know more about the characters. Plus, we didn't really get to interact with these characters in previous storylines. Well, with the exception of Barbara. So I'm super curious about what this will bring. I guess this is our chance to interact with them more. Speaking of which, I find it hard to imagine Chung Yoon inviting me out. <laughs> Maybe he'll invite you for a popsicle. <laughs> Maybe. And that's not all. We'll be getting more Hangout events with future version updates. So be sure to keep an eye out for those down the roads. And now I can start my harem. Ah, I'm so excited. I can't wait to try these. So that's all I have regarding the new Hangout events. Again, travelers should remember that these quests are lasting additions and won't disappear with future version updates. <laughs> that's good. But how about some events and challenges that'll be exclusive in version 1.4? Ooh, you're right on track. We'll get to those in the next section. Okay, with that in mind, I think it's time for us to give away our second redeemable code to reward our loyal viewers out there. Yes, finally! <laughs> code inbound in three, two, one. Let's continue our version previews with some other events and challenges coming in version 1.4. So, what other events can we expect besides the Windbloom Festival? Well, first, we'll have Wishful Drops. Wishful Drops? Hmm, sounds like it has something to do with water. You're sort of 
started getting there with the water idea in Wishful Drops, a strange little life form who travels all the way from the nation of water accidentally causes a crisis in Mondstadt's wine industry. <gasps> what? No, a crisis in Mondstadt's wine industry? Oh, far be it from me to witness such tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a dream come true for Diona, though. I mean, she'll be happy. <laughs> In order to solve the problem, travelers will partner up with a little oceanid of pure water, explore different areas together, and help it absorb oceanid creatures. The oceanid will learn more and grow up in the process. Oh, looks like the event won't be just dispatching expeditions. Nope. And after all the explorations are over, the little oceanid will be added to our inventory, just like the Sealy from Lost Riches. Oh, great. Another little one for company. All the more reason to abandon Paimon. Hey, stop trying to take my job. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the topic. While our little Oceanid is learning from its exploration, the event challenge Raging Rodea will appear in Wishful Drops 2. Rodea? That's a familiar name. Uh, oh, 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 she's the Oceanid of Chingsa. Oh, yeah, her. Man, that's gonna be scary. In this event challenge, Rodea gets unusually boisterous and filled with rage, gaining some extra power and abilities. Ooh, so it'll basically be like Rodea 2.0. And once again, I feel like I can totally anticipate my fate. But we got you covered, Zack. Travelers will be able to deal damage directly to Rodea's body in this challenge. And we can team up to fighter in co-op mode if you actually invite me, Zack. So be sure to give it a try. <laughs> Sounds good. But I'd like to know what we can get from this event challenge. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we are going to gain a lot of character experience materials as rewards. Oh, thank goodness. I pretty much always need more of those. It costs original resin to collect those rewards, so it's not like unlimited. Aww. But... But? Remember the little Oceanid? Each time we help it absorb enough Oceanid creatures from an area, we will get one heart of the spring, which can be used one at a time to claim rewards from Raging Rodea. There are five areas to explore, so we will get five heart of the springs in total. Woo, five free rewards, nice. It leaves more room for other activities. Another new event coming in version 1.4 is called Contending Tides. Whoa, what a cool name. And it just so happens that we have a cool trailer for it. Zach, I'll need your deep voice for this. You mean this voice? That's what I'm talking about. Ready, action. <laughs> uh, oh, I mean, oh. Everyone born in this corner of the world has dreamed about becoming the strongest in Tevat. Dadaupa Gorge's meaty arena is currently summoning all contenders willing to fight for that title. Time limits, the status of your teammates, tough enemies, all manner of challenges and goals. Such things aren't good for your health, you know. The proportion of conductive substances within the sweat from your battle-worn brow is less than 1%. Release powerful shockwaves in this manner and increase the damage of your next plunging attack. This is known in some circles as the art of the cannonball. Mighty ancient warriors shall do battle with the rising star known as the Traveler. Is this what they call a Clash of the Titans? Sometimes you gotta tough it out a bit to become the strongest there is. I don't mean to be rude. Frost arm lodgers, training? That's not fair to the weak. directors uh zach should be in all of your movie trailers just saying hey yeah i'm here i'm, I'm open to all opportunities 
<laughs> As shown in the trailer, we will have all those challenges in Dada Upa Gorge's Meaty Arena. Starting from the first day of the event, a new challenge with three difficulty levels will be added daily. The rewards will vary for each difficulty. Uh, so do I need to fight three times to claim all the rewards? Nope. Upon completing a higher difficulty, all difficulties below it will be deemed completed as well. Nice. But you do need to pay attention to the completion criteria. There are three criteria per challenge, and you have to achieve them all to complete the challenge. Oh, awesome. Looks like we'll have plenty to do there. That being said, travelers will get different buffs in each challenge. If you take advantage of those, it'll be easier for you to clear those challenges. Sweet. So what kind of buffs can travelers expect to see? We'll have to wait and check them out in game. Ooh, they're probably related to those epic lines you just read, Zach. Who knows? <laughs> and that's all for the new events in version 1.4. How exciting! And as always, our last section will be about our optimizations and new features added in Genshin Impact version 1.4. Erica, I'll leave this part to you. Okie dokie. The developers of Genshin Impact always want to provide better gameplay experiences through new features and adjustments. And this time, we are having some handy optimizations, too. Let's check out what's on the list. At the top of the list is Condensed Resin. Yeah, many travelers have been hoping they would raise the limit, and it turns out wishes will come true! In version 1.4, Genshin Impact will be increasing the limit of condensed resin one can hold from 3 to 5. Yay! So we can save more resin and use them in specific domains! Yes, that's right. And when we're too busy to play, we can save more than a day's resin for later use. Time to farm those crystal flies! Get out the butterfly nets! <laughs> The next optimization will be for the game's cooking system. After the version update, travelers will be able to cook food manually, even if they've already unlocked auto-cook for that particular dish. We can select how to cook more freely. Huh, but why would we need manual cooking in the first place? Well, there's an achievement for cooking suspicious food, and if you've cooked every dish perfectly because you're just amazing at the game, then you might miss this one. So now we can try this out for any food at any time. Ha! Suspicious foods never stop Paimon before! <laughs> Speaking of which, with the new version update, overall production experiences such as cooking, crafting, and forging will improve with a new adjustment. The game will remember which character we've used to make certain products and will set them as default for the next production. Of course, there will still be the option to change the selected character manually. Aw, oh, that's so nice. We won't need to scroll through the list looking for the right characters every time now. Yeah, saves time and scrolling. <laughs> Another important feature change to expect in the version update will be regarding the game's world level system. Starting from version 1.4, travelers will actually be able to decrease their world level by one. Whoa, that's crazy. So it's like we'll have a ticket back if we don't want to stay in the harder world then. Exactly. Travelers will be able to dip their toes in the harder world level and decide if they want to stay there or lower it back down. This change world level function will unlock at world level 5, and travelers can manually lower their world level by 1 once the function is available. But the question is, can we return to the harder world level once we're ready? Oh yeah, totally! Travelers may revert their world level if they wish. And of course, the rewards from world bosses and leyline blossoms correspond to the current world level, so everyone will have to balance the pros and cons. One thing to be noted, travelers will only be able to change their world level once every 24 hours, so be sure to think it through beforehand. Ooh, nice. This one's definitely an interesting change. Next, our in-game profile screen will have a new feature in the coming update. Oh, I remember in 1.3 they added the character showcase. So what did we get this time? <laughs> yeah, that's right. In version 1.4, there will be a new space to showcase collected name cards. Travelers can use the space to make some of their name cards visible to others, and upon clicking the showcased name cards, they can view the descriptions and details on how to get them. All the more reason to collect more name cards. Yeah! And last but not least, we'll have some adjustments to the Spiral Abyss. With the new update, travelers will be able to exit the Spiral Abyss at the character selection screen between two floors. They'll also be able to check the elemental resonance of their two teams for floors that diverge. Great! That's so helpful for building the right teams. <laughs> and that's not all. Travelers will also be able to restart the challenge mid-combat in the Abyss. 
All we need to do is press the escape key or the button on the upper left to retry. Oh, so we'll be able to restart immediately when we know that we've failed, which I do a lot, to get the best rewards. <laughs> Yeah, right? This is a very important update to me. <laughs> now that'll save some time for the Abyss Grinders. Yep. And, um, that's all we got for new features and optimizations coming in version 1.4. I'm really excited to see all of these implemented. Sweet! <laughs> and with that, I think it's time to unpack the last redeemable code. That's right, that's right! Everybody get ready for the goodies! Code inbound in three, two, one! among the fans, our special program has reached its glorious end. <laughs> Sounds like Erica's been having a lot of fun on the special program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so tell us, Erica, how does it feel to do the version previews with us? This was so fun. I like, I love any excuse to be venti even more. And <laughs> I love you guys. I miss we you We love you so too. Much. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and I miss you so much. I know. Oh, you guys are the best. And I can't wait to do all the updates and play the mini games in the Windbloom Festival. Eek! Yeah, me too. I'm going to enter into your world, Zach. And while you're fighting a big boss, I'm just going to sit there and play songs on the lyre. <laughs> <laughs> Can I also come and play different songs? We're playing like two different songs. Well, Zach. Yes, off key. Yuck, awesome. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope everybody's had a good time and will enjoy version 1.4. Don't forget to send flowers to those you love during the Windbloom Festival. Yeah. May you find joy in the brilliant flowers and gentle breeze flowing through Mondstadt. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Genshin Impact version 1.4 special program. Take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everyone. You're amazing. I love you. Ah! Take care and see you in the game! <laughs>